Did you give you give it all I got is Jesus. Mm-hmm. Our God more than God, Jehovah God. I will tell it to the world, Jesus. You are more than God, my God. Mm-hmm. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Lord. You are more than God, my Father. I will tell it to the world, Jesus. You got everything that I need, Jesus. When I get you, I get God. When I get you, I get everything that I need in my life, Jesus. You are everything that I need in my life, my God. I will tell it to the world. They don't need to hustle here and there, Jehovah God. You are everything that we need in our lives, Jesus. When you back what we do, Jehovah God, no matter how small it is, my God, when you back our thoughts, my God, when you back our thoughts, my Father, we got everything that we need in our lives, Jesus. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. We honor you, Lord. We bless your holy name, Jesus. I will declare from the bottom of my heart, Jesus, that you are everything that I need in my life, dear Lord. You are everything I need in my children's life. You are everything that I need in my business, my God. You are everything that I need in my walk with you, Jehovah God. I got more than gold when I got you, Jesus. I got more than gold when I get you in my business, my God. When I get you in my finances, my God, I got everything that I need. And so this wonderful living in my God, we want to declare to the world that our soul is longing for you, Jesus. Our hearts are longing for you. Our spirits are longing for you, dear Lord. Our hearts are beating for you, Master Jesus. You are something more than gold, Jehovah God. I have got something more than silver, Jesus. When you're in my life, dear Lord, I got everything I need. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you are more than every rich that I need, Jehovah God. You are everything to my life. You are everything to my ministry, my God. You are everything to my life. You are everything to my children. You are everything to my walk of life, dear Lord. You are my everything. Even in those moments that we cannot even determine what tomorrow holds for us, Jesus. When we go to you, we have surety of our lives, Jesus. We have surety of going on, Jehovah God. You are more than gold, Jesus. You are more than gold, my Father. Rama sheka taraba yandere nebo. Zeke tereba yanda kariba zia na makata raba yande. I want that song to minister to somebody who doesn't know what to do. You have everything. You have everything. When you got my Jesus, when you got my Jesus, you got everything. When you got my Jesus, you got everything. Oh, raba sheka taraba baba baba. You are more than gold, Jesus. You are more than everything that we need in our lives, dear Lord. When we have you, Jehovah. Jehovah God, no matter how small we start, my God, you will surely back us up, Jehovah King of Glory. You are more than God, my God. Oh, Rabba Shekata, Rabba Baba Baba. Are you seeing your life in desperate situation? When you got Jesus, you got everything. When you got Jesus, you got increase of numbers. When you got Jesus, you got increase of years. When you got Jesus, you have the hope of glory. We bless your name, Jesus. Jesus. We honor you. You are more than gold, Jesus. We bless you. We bless you. We honor you, Jesus. When we go to Lord, when we go to Jesus, we got, we got more than gold, Jesus. Oh, our souls are longing for you, dear Lord, as the deer parted for the water, Jesus. That is how the soul of the world is yearning for you, Jesus. I pray that we may turn to this Jesus. That we may turn to this God. That we may turn to this more than silver. Oh, Jesus, as a nation, we bow before you. As a country, we bow before you. As constitution, constituency, my God, we bow before you. As some counties, my God, we bow before you. As the dear brother for the water, Jesus. That is how our souls are fighting for you, Jesus. We got you, Jehovah. Oh my God, we got everything. We got you. We got the vaccine for COVID. We got you. We got a solution for COVID. Oh, Jehovah God, our hearts are after you, dear Lord. You are more than God, Jesus. Zakata you are more than God, my God. You are more than everything that we need in our lives, Jesus. You are far above it. We bless you, Lord. To do, my Father. We bless you, Lord Jesus. God for being our teacher. We go out to more than God, Jesus. Leader. My God Almighty, we will tell it to the world. Be a God to this Jesus is God. more than God. Oh, yes, Lord. We thank the name of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Tell it to the world. Jesus is more than God. Jesus is more than God.
is more than gold. We bless your name, Jesus. You are more than gold, my God. We will tell it to the world, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You are more than gold, my God. We bless you. We bless your name. We honor you, Jehovah God. Surely you are more than gold. We bless your name, Jehovah God, for your coming to beautify our lives this wonderful evening. Thank you, Lord, for shielding us. Thank you for protecting us. And thank you for calling us by your name, dear Lord. The Bible says that them that you have called, you have already justified, you have already redeemed, and you have already glorified and prestined. Master Jesus, that is our position in the name of Jesus Christ. We know that whatever small we start, whatever our small mind can carry, Jesus, when you back it, it will be more than gold to us. When we get you, dear Lord, we got everything that we need in life. And so we want to thank you that this wonderful evening, you have counted us worthy, dear Lord. And when we get you, Jehovah God, we got gold in our lives. And so we honor you and we appreciate we welcome you and your presence, dear Lord. In this wonderful meeting, we refuse to go without you, dear Lord. It is not our meeting. This is your meeting, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we pray that you may go together with us, dear Lord. We pray that you may glorify yourself in our lives in a very, very special way. We love you. We bless you. For it is in Jesus' name we do pray and we give thanks. And somebody say, Amen and Amen. We just want to take this wonderful opportunity once again. This is JCA Church. We want to welcome you to the presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit this wonderful evening. It is a cold, cold evening. But the grace of God is sufficient. Amen. We will not tire to leave the name of the Lord high. We will not tire of telling the world that Jesus is more than gold. Hallelujah. And so we want just to continue from where we left last week. And I know God is going to tremendously bless us. It has been our month of divine settlement. And I want to assure you that before we enter the next month, which shall be a glorious month, I want to assure you that the benefit of divine settlement shall be your portion in Jesus name. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. And we have been talking about the God of my finances. Mm -hmm. Do you know that God cares so much about your finances? Praise the Lord. Amen. And we learned that some of the things that makes us far from God is debts. And our debts is a weapon that the enemy has used in the current world to make sure that we get diverted from the will of God. Remember I said, having debt is not a sin. Not that you will not go to heaven. But it is a hindrance to the purpose of God in your life. Can I hear somebody say amen? We started by reading the word of God from the book of Nehemiah 5, 3 to 5. That was our core scripture. For those ones who didn't, uh, who are not together with us, I want you to invite you to our YouTube channel. Kindly subscribe. Judean City of Abadans, JCA. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you're going to get that powerful message for us Friday. And the Lord will do you well. We learned, number one, that debt is a form of slavery. Praise the Lord. We learned it from the book of 2 Kings 4-7. That any time that you have debt, you enter into a form of slavery. The Bible says that whoever leads or whoever borrows mm -hmm. becomes a slave to the lender. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's the reason why you get many mm -hmm. at the time that if you owe somebody something, mm -hmm. you feel like you are oblige, obliged to them. Mm -hmm. You are obligated to them. Sometimes if you borrow nyanya, instead of you using the shortest way to your home, you get yourself using a very different route. Why? Because the, you are a slave. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, Proverbs 22, 7. Go and read it. And again, Proverbs 17, 18. It is a scripture that if you read, you're going to get the warnings about the debt. Number two, we said, debt prevents rest. Anytime that you have debt, you cannot rest. You'll wake up very early in the morning and run out. If you have a debt of the landlord, you'll make sure that you enter at 11.30 and you leave at 4.30 because you don't want... The, 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 the landlord or the landlady to see you. It makes you lack rest. And you know what? Sabbath was meant for workers. 
So God intended us to rest. Now, any time that you carry debt, you'll get that you are overworking yourself. You get that you are working many hours so that you come and cover the debt. I pray for you Amen. that by the grace of God, rest is your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Divine settlement, mm. it is rest all around. Mm. It is rest when you are you, you don't have even time to rest and enjoy your family life because you are running up and down trying to make ends meet. Go and read Deuteronomy 15, 1 to 2. And again, uh, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, and Ecclesiastes 5, 4. Praise the Lord. I am just doing a recap for those ones who are not together with us. Again, number three, debt is a procrastinator way of spending money. Praise the Lord. Just because you know you're going to get a debt somewhere, you'll get that you are not aggressive. Praise the Lord. You always borrow against your future now. Debt eats your future in the present. Praise the Lord. Whatever you are borrowing, you're going to eat your future. So it means whatever you are intended to do in five years time, you will not do it because you already ate it five years back. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 6, 10 to 11. And again, Proverbs 21, 5. Proverbs 21, 20. And Luke 16, 10. Those are the scriptures that we looked at last time. Number four, debt is a metaphor of sin. Is a metaphor of sin. It's the other name of sin. It's only that it was not projected in the word. Any time that you are in debt, Amos 2, 8. Any time that you are in debt, you will try to cover your mess. Praise the Lord. I've ever had people when will you pay me? And then you start giving out stories that are lies. Some of you say your grandmother was hit by a wheelbarrow in the village. You, you give very funny information just because you want to epuka. And I normally tell people, anytime that you tell a person, I'm going to pay you next week, be as you are not God, next week will still come. So what will happen? So it is becoming a pile up of sin. If you hear somebody telling somebody else, ulipatia fulani pesa zako, hizo utaendea kwa kaburi. Inamanisha, you have become a metaphor of sin. Also read Matthew 6, 12 and Romans 6, 23. Number five, we said, debt compromises your ability to provide. Anytime that you're in debt, it will compromise your ability to become a provider in your family. Praise the Lord. Psalms 37, 21 and 1 Timothy 5, 8. There are so many scriptures that we can relate with. Also Proverbs 13, 22 and Proverbs 22, 3 and Proverbs 28, 8. I told you this is a Bible-believing church. And so we just don't marble things. We don't want just to say things. We want things that are going to help you. When you read the scripture, you will see why that make you, make you incapacitated to become a provider. Praise the Lord. It is an error. The Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy 5, 8, for you not to provide to your immediate relatives. Praise the Lord. It is such an error that your family is going hungry. And I remember last time I gave an example of a man who works with a very, very good company. But because he became a guarantor to somebody and, the, and you know what, the Bible, uh, the Bible command or wants us from becoming bank guarantors and quarateros. You give yourself, that's what we, we have learned in the book of Amos 2.8. You, you, you are not supposed to become a guarantor to somebody before you become a guarantor can you ask because some of these people they are taking their own in the wrong dimension and so you end up in that man works with a very very good NGO and he cannot even pay the school fees for his children why his money is getting deducted every month he guaranteed somebody and that person ran away i pray for you anybody who is has run away with your money and right now you are suffering you are paying a debt that is not yours may the lord bring them back to the path of payment in the name of jesus christ mm -hmm. praise the lord mm -hmm. number six we said debt compromises your ability to be generous there is no way you can be generous to another person when you yourself you're not enjoying generosity praise the lord there is no way I'll take money here and go and provide for another family when myself, auctioneers, are coming after my head. Praise the Lord. And you know what? We have been given power to become a blessing to others. It is a duty. The blessing of finances attract giving. Praise the Lord. The more you give, 
the more you become financially stable. Now, it means that if you carry debt, you cannot be generous. Proverbs 3, 9, uh, Matthew 5, 42, 1 Corinthians 16, 2, and 1 John 3, 17. And I'm going fast because I wanted to handle something briefly today by the grace, grace of God. Number seven, where I was supposed to finish two things and then I continue. Number seven, God has said, I've said Proverbs 3, 9, Proverbs 3, 27, Matthew 5, 42, 1 John 3, 17, and also 1 Corinthians 16, 2. What does death do apart from the six? Number seven, God uh, forbids credit card companies in Israel. Praise the Lord. So any time, and this one, I want to be very, very careful when I'm speaking about it. We don't want to say any business is a business. No, there are businesses that God will back and there are businesses that God will not back. Praise the Lord. And whatever negotiations or whatever entries that you are going into, even you as a borrower, there are some money that you borrow in these companies that I'm just about to speak tonight that God will not back. If you're a child of God and you own a Shiloh King farm, then you are doing a thing that God will never visit. Praise the Lord. I'm not the one who has said Psalms 15. Psalm, Psalms 15, 1 to 2. What does the Bible say? Psalms 15, 1 to 2. bit faster. Psalms 15, 1 to 2. The Bible says, Lord, who shall dwell temporarily in your tabernacle? <laughs> who shall dwell permanently on your holy hill? Yes. Verse 2. He who walks and lives uprightly uh -huh. and blamelessly. Yes. Who works right, rightness uh -huh. and justice. And justice. And speaks and thinks the truth in yes. his heart. Uh -huh. Verse 3. Yes. He who does not slander with his tongue, yeah. nor does, does evil to his friend, yes. nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor. Yes. Verse 4. Yes. In whose eyes a vile person is de despised, mm. but he who honors those who fear the Lord, yes. who revere and worship him, yes. who swears to his own heart and does not change. Yes. Number five. He, he who does not put out his money. He who does not put his money. For interest. For interest. To one of his own people. To one of his own people. And to who will not take a bribe. And to who, who will not take a bribe. Against the innocent. Against the innocent. He who does these things. He who does these things. Shall never be moved. <laughs> shall never be moved. Praise the Lord. Who is that who is going to dwell in the tabernacles of the Lord? Who is that who is going to enjoy the goodness of the Lord? He who does not slander. He who does not speak things that are ungodly. And he who does not give his money for interest. Praise the Lord. So it is. I'm no, I normally tell people. Some of these businesses that look good. They are very weird in the eyes of the Lord. And they don't carry the backing of the Lord. Go and read that scripture yourself. Again, Psalms 112, 5. Says what? Psalms 112. 5. Psalms 112, 5. The Bible <laughs> says, It is well with the man who deals generously. Yes. And lends. And lends. Who conducts his affairs with justice. Who conducts his affairs with justice. Mm. Praise the Lord. It is well with the man who leads. So lending is not bad. Like I, I, I'm saying, if you have to get money, there are some monies that you can get. It's okay. But make sure that the kind of borrowing that you are doing is a borrowing that is bringing in income, not eating income. Praise the Lord. I, I received so many questions. Some people are telling me, woman of God, can I borrow to get a mortgage? Yes. Because whatever you have been paying as a rent, you will invest it somewhere else. Praise the Lord. You can never borrow to pay school fees. Because where have you been? This is the concept of saving. Somebody else asked a question. Woman of God, can I tithe from loan? No. You should not tithe from loan. 
Because this money is not genuine money. It is not money you have worked for. You have eaten your future. Praise the Lord. Never ever be lying. I, somebody sent me a message and told me, one of God, I took a loan of one million and, and in the church, I, and, and whatever I wanted to buy was exactly for that one million. And I was told to take a tithe of a hundred thousand to the church. And now I got a deficit of one, 100,000. Now I had to look for 100,000 again to come and fill the project I wanted to do. Now, remember, when you're getting your loan from your finance, which we call the clock, the Bible calls it a clock. Your income is the clock now. When the Bible calls it the clock in the book of Leviticus 25, 35 to 37. Now, when you take the loan from the clock, that loan is deducted from your income and the same income you should give your tithe from the gloss. Praise the Lord. Not from the net. So it means before the loan has been deducted, you have already given. So that loan has been catered during your tithe. Praise the Lord. Somebody else was asking me, can I take a loan for medical? Yes. If it is that urgent, you can. There are some specific positions that the Bible does not tell us not to pick, but with the wisdom of God, you can pick. But picking a loan to pay another loan, you are in disaster. Because it means, now to pay the other loan that you have already picked, you will pick loan D. Praise the Lord. Anything, any loan that you pick, make sure that the money that you have, it is money that you can see it produce. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I also don't back by picking loan to buy a car. I don't back it. I only back a, an appreciating thing, not a, a depreciating thing. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's a sermon for another day. Debt, when you pick money from a Shadok, it means the glory of God is not there. The glory of God will not... That's the reason why people who pick money from Shadok... I heard somebody say a statement, and I want—I don't want to back it biblically, I don't know, but somebody was saying Shadok money is like cast money. It is money that you come and wakati wakulipa utashindwa. Kwa sababu, it is an accumulative money of interest. It is a dragon that you come and eat even what you had. Have you ever seen people take a Shylock of 100,000? They end up paying 1 million. What happened? It is because it is a cast money. The hand of God, according to the book of Psalms 15, 1 to 5, is not there. I pray for you. Anywhere you are involved in Shylock, mm. and right now you don't know how to get out of it, mm. by the masses of God, mm. by the principles of being successful, mm. my God and my Father, may he redeem you from it mm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. And number eight, as I conclude, debt conflict with a hard working mindset. Anytime you enter into debt, it will conflict with a hard working mindset. You always, you know, debt is more than a number. It is more than a number. It is a way of thinking. Anytime that you think, um, atakama kazi yendi vizuri, nitapata mkopo. Ama KCB, nimefikishua KCB, mpesa, nimefikishua 60,000. Ndaweza kukopa nilipe renta. It is diminishing you from becoming a hard-working person. What does the Bible say in the Proverbs 13, 11? Proverbs 13, 11. Also, read Exodus 22, 14. Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. Exodus 22, 14. Proverbs 6, 6 to 8. Proverbs 10, 4. Proverbs 11, 15. All these are things that are going to conflict your heart hard working mindset. And you know what? The Bible says a little folding of hands, a little slumber, and poverty will come knocking. Debt is an agent of poverty. If there is one of the cars that the devil is using today to write, have you ever seen a woman or a man who has been an MP for 10 years, having taken mortgages and mortgages and debts and debts to buy a very fabulous machine car, only for him to lose the seat. And then the auctioneers come start picking. The, you get a man who was once an MP. Unambua huyu. Alikuwa ni muheshimiwa wa constituency flani. Unamuangalia unashanga. You are even living better than them. 
Why? It is one of the vehicles that the devil uses to bring poverty. I pray for you that by the masses of Jehovah, you are not going to work now and end up becoming poor. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ, as you start gathering today, mm -hmm. it shall be a prosperity for your children. Mm -hmm. It shall be a posterity for your generation in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Read for me Proverbs 13, 11 says what? Wealth gained history. Wealth not earned but won in haste. Yes. Or unjustly. Yes. Or from the production of things for or, for fame or this. Can, 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 can you repeat again? Can you repeat again, Pastor? Wealth gained. Wealth not earned but won in haste. Or mm -hmm. unjustly or from the production of things. Yes. For vain, for vain, remember use. Yes, such riches, such will riches, go away. They will fly away. But he who gathers little by but little, but he who gathers little will by little, increase his riches. He is going to increase his riches. I pray for you. Mm -hmm. No matter the position that Jehovah is giving you, mm -hmm. either you are a man of God, mm -hmm. either you are a man of the people, may you desire to gather little by little. Don't become a man of God who is going to manipulate the altar. Mm -hmm. You'll get wealth very fast. But when your time to come down comes, you hit down like a thunder. Mm -hmm. I pray for you. Mm -hmm. You are not going to be among us the people who are going to be ashamed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have you ever gone to people's home and you get Range Rovers? That they are not, the spare parts are no longer there. Why? They have turned the Range Rovers to become the chicken hatching Cages. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Why? When poverty started coming, it used debts. I pray for you that we will not gather right now only for our children to be auctioned in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We will not gather right now only for us, our children to be taking care of us when we have grown old in Jesus' name. It is an error. For us to be supporting our children, our parents, when they are, our parents are supposed to leave an inheritance for us. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we are not getting blessed. The Bible says, a blessed man leaves an inheritance for his great grandchildren. Mm -hmm. That is a, a poverty flea man. But in Africa today, you hear all parents are using medicine. From arthritis, and I'm not saying it's not good to help them, but I pray that my finances will not buy them medicine. My finances will be taking them to outings. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll be blessing them with powerful things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, why do we need financial deliverance very fast? Why do we need financial deliverance? Let me tell you one thing. Never ever be comfortable. Poverty is a demon. If you have never been poor, hey, if you have never been poor, if you have never looked at your shoes like this, they are smiling on everybody at, or at the road. Zinaenda zikisalimia watu. My dear, if you have never, kama ujai rudia nguo, if you have never borrowed a dress going for an interview, if you have never worn an oversized shoe, then this sermon is not yours. Poverty is an embarrassment. Mm -hmm. I remember one day, I was not in a position to pay a rent of 2,500. And the landlord could come and shout at me. And I could tell my husband, Usi ingie mapema, wacha mimi nitukanwe, wewe ukikuja ukute. Anakuja na kwambe unajua tu kukula nyama na umeshindo kulipa rent. And I'm telling you, nyama yenyewe ni akichwa. Hey, I don't know who I'm talking to. I know there are men of God who, who are knowing this and they know where we have come from. Mimi nimekula nyama ya kichwa. Nimekula. Ninakatiwa ya 20 bob napika na uskuma. Hey. Poverty. Poverty. At today I can go to the butchery and I ask whatever I want. I, I, I kid in a liver. Whatever you call them. And I bring them to the house. May the Lord have mercy. If the Lord delivered me from that that cage to break in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Why? Let me. When you know why you need financial freedom, you pray like a wounded lion. You pray and scatter. You scatter powers from your father's house. Stop being comfortable. Stop being comfortable. When you are not eating one meal, you are saying, "Atuna fast changuvu." Ah, no. If it was not the will of God, then we could not have the three course meal. Praise the Lord. Hange umba asubui afternoon na evening. Hange umba. Hange umba skumoja mfrurizo. Praise the Lord. Joel 2, 18, 19. Why do you need financial deliverance? Listen to this. Joel 2, 18 and 19. 18 and 19. 
The Bible says, Then was the Lord jealous for his land and had pity on his people. Yes. 19. Yes, the Lord answered and said to his people, Yes. Beyond, I am sending you grain. I am sending you grain of the grave. Of the grave. And the oil. And the oil. And you shall be satisfied. And you me. shall be satisfied. And I will no more make you a reproach. Yes. Among the other. Oh nations. my God. Financial freedom removes reproach. Mm. Amen. Financial freedom make you satisfied. Financial freedom brings fulfillment. I pray for you that by the grace of Jehovah, you are going to be settled. You are going to have financial freedom. You are going to have fulfillment in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy 28, 11, 12. Deuteronomy 28, 11, 12 says what? The Bible says. Yes. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus. And the Lord shall make you have. It is the Lord. Having surplus is not demonic. Mm -hmm. Having surplus, it is the will of God. So anytime that you have loan, anytime that you have debt, you don't have surplus. And the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity. The Lord shall make you have surplus of prosperity. Through the fruit of your body. Through the fruit of your body. Of your livestock. Of your livestock. And of your ground. And of your ground. In the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. To give you, yes. The Lord shall open to you his good treasure. Hey, Amen. Praise the, the Lord. Heavens. Financial Amen. deliverance is God opening his good treasure. Mm. Praise the Lord. Mm. Do you know what is prosperity? Prosperity is sitting down, you eat, and the money works for you. Mm. That is prosperity. That no matter what happens, you can live comfortable. No matter what you're going through, your children will never one day suffer. That is prosperity. That is what the word of He said, I am going to make sure that you're going to live in prosperity. I pray for you that the man that is coming, the man of new beginning, as we enter the addiction of success, you are going to be prosperous. Amen. You are going to enter the place of financial rest. Amen. And financial deliverance shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number one, why do you need financial deliverance? You know what? A poor man has opinion. But he can never make a decision. A poor man can never make a decision. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you one thing. Have you ever gone to family meetings where people know what they are saying? Where people are the one who are standing for a project. You can't talk. You will say, Mi nilikuwa ninaona, hii choi yekwe mrango kubwa kwa sabu mina kuanga mnono. They will just look at you like this. After you finish, when you're not a person, I say, Oh, yeah, fundi, because you only have opinions, you can never make decisions. Praise the Lord. You have ever been humiliated in meetings. Ukaenda mkutano, ukapeana decision yako. Now, by the way, everybody clapped. By the end of the day, it was not followed. Your opinion was never followed because you, ca you carry not the money. After uliongea, ukambiwa, let a pesa, ukanyamaza. How can we back your decision and you have nothing to show? Watch to back zetu watakama zinaka ambaya. Families have invested in the wrong businesses just because you didn't have shares. You didn't have shares, so you could not have spoken. When you get walienda kwa easy shairo, easy pyramids nyezilianguka, just because you didn't have money, unge wasmamisha, ulikuna jua pyramids were not right, but because you didn't have a say, you kept quiet. I pray for you that God is bringing finances your way, that will give you a decision in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number one, when you get financial deliverance, you get fulfilled in life. Praise the Lord. Your life get fulfilled. Let me tell you one thing. You can walk in confidence knowing that your tomorrow is handled. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Do you know what is happening today? I, I saw in the newspaper, even the rich families, they are getting one of their rooms and they are making them ICUs. Us, we are just standing by the masses of God. Oh, Jehovah God, we sprinkle the blood of Jesus in the heavens. Make sure that this COVID does not come near my home because you don't know what tomorrow holds. Praise the Lord. Not that you have been forced to pray because you have no choice. The ICU better who fool. Your money cannot even speak for you. 
Praise the Lord. I pray for you that by financial deliverance, you are going to be fulfilled in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two, why do you need financial deliverance? To manifest the glory of God. You need financial deliverance mm -hmm. for you to manifest the glory of God. Listen to what happens to a poor man. Proverbs 19, 7. Proverbs 19, 7. Yes. Proverbs 19, 7 says what? Yes. All the brothers of a poor man. All the brothers of a poor man. Detest him. They detest him. How much more do his friends go? How much more will your friends believe in you? He pursues them with words. He pursues them with words. But they are gone. But they are gone. Praise the Lord. How will you carry the glory of God if the people that you are preaching to can have money more than you? When they look at you, you are poor. You are the one who calls them every day. Oh yeah, my rent, I, my house is being closed. My baby does not have school uniform. My, my, my wife is walking without shoes. You. And you're expecting to follow them with what? They'll go. But when you have financial deliverance, you will carry the glory of God. You will be speaking, they listen. You will be standing with them, they listen. They say, oh yeah, the man of God in this house has spoken. I pray for you yes. that by the grace of Jehovah, mm -hmm. let God's manifestation of glory yes. be made manifest upon your life by through finances in yes. the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me tell you one thing. With finances, you can win all your brothers. Mm. You can win them. You can call them for a conference alone. Kama kwenu muna kuanga wanane. You call for a conference. Unambia, I want to meet with you. All of you, Hilton Hotel. I have booked the ballroom. I want us to meet there. All of them will come. Ata wengine waja ingia Hilton. Lakini watakuja. Wakikuja waki ingia Hilton. Wanasavi wa food zote. You have already paid 50,000. Afu nawambia, brothers, I called here because I love you. I didn't want you to go to my house because you are used to my house. I have come here to let you know that God loves you so much. God is concerned with your souls. We are here to celebrate the wonders of God. When you look at me, you see the glory of God. You have eaten the glory of God. And then they look at you like, see, you get pick and you buy and tell them, no, I want to show you that my God is capable of doing more than what you can think or imagine. Eat and feel refreshed. Wakitoka hapo wataitisha watakolo, wataokoka. But now you, you are the one who kenda kwa unabeba skari, unabeba unga, unabeba ndoma, unabeba kila kitu yenye kwa brother yako. Seriously, I pray for you that by mercies of Jehovah, Amen. let the glory of God manifest Amen. upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Unaenda kwa sister yako na kuliza, kuna githeri ilikuwa imebandi kwa hapa last week, but one, utabeba. Eh, hey, wendu unabebanga githeri yenye meoza. Because you don't carry the glory of God. May the Lord remember you tonight. May the Lord manifest his glory upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Number three, to, um, to appropriate your redemption right. You need financial deliverance for you to appropriate the redemption right. Do you know the redemption right that you received made you rich? Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. We are almost finishing. 8, 9 says what? Bible say, for you are becoming progressively acquainted. For you are becoming progressively acquainted with and recognizing more strongly. Yes, and clearly the grace of our Lord. The Jesus. grace of our Lord Jesus. Why? His kindness. His kindness. His gracious. His gracious. Uh -huh. His under 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 served favor. And deserved favor. And spiritual blessings. And spiritual blessings. He was so very rich. So he was very rich. Yet for your sake, he how so will poor. you? How will you stand with the redemption right if you are poor? Mm. How? He became poor for us to be rich. So getting rich is not an illuminati thing. The devil has nothing of his own. The devil comes to steal, kill, and so he's a thief. He has stolen your prosperity. He has stolen your finances. People say, ah, you know, at nowadays, at gospel of riches. Let me tell you one thing. The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God. And all the other things, other things are riches. I will show you the kingdom of God and I will show you how to make money. I will show you business. Praise the Lord. If you go to my world, I am doing business. I am not corrupted. I am doing business. Why? I have shown you the kingdom of God and now I want to show you how to make money. I pray for you that the exit 
of the redemption of Jesus. The right of your redemption shall be your possession in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Number four. Why do you need financial deliverance? The destinies of many are attached to our destinies and we need to carry their burdens. A lot of people's destinies are attached to our prosperity. Read for me. Hebrews 13, 16. Hebrews 13, 16. What does the Bible say? Hebrews 13, 16. Says what? The Bible says, Do not forget or neglect to do kindness and good, uh -huh. to be generous and distribute and contribute to the needy of the church as embodiment and proof of fellowship for such as a proof of pleasing to God. As such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Mm. Now, if you are in debt, if you cannot carry other people's burden, it means you are not pleasing God. I, I read that scripture and I told my God, my Father, I need, oh God, I need my God. I need to please you. Hebrews 13, 16. I need to please you, my God. Mm. Do you know when you overlook other people's burdens, you don't please God? A heathen is better than you. Ah! Praise the Lord. Mm. A heathen who is carrying people's burden is better than you. He is pleasing God more than you. And you are the one who carries the constitutional, the, the heavenly constitutional rights of being rich. Praise the Lord. <laughs> also read Galatians 6 2. I want to finish today because next week, uh, next, uh, next week I want to start on something else about financial success. Praise the Lord. Galatians, Galatians 6 2. I'm not saying we read it. Let them read for themselves. Again, we do number five. Why do you need financial deliverance? To be able to further the things of the kingdom of God. You need financial deliverance. For you to further the things of the kingdom of God. Read for me Luke 8, 2 to 3. You know what? Failing to back up the things of God. Not everybody is called to be a minister. But you are supposed to send a minister. Luke 8, 2 and 3. The Bible says, And also some women who had been cured of evil spirits yes. and diseases. Yes. Mary called Magdalene. Mm. From whom seven demons had been expelled. Listen, Johanna, before you continue, man of God, do you know every time that God does you a miracle, you are supposed to back his work? One, the miracle of salvation. Mary Magdalene, demons were removed from her. She said, The only thing I can do is giving God my substances. Do you know? Anytime that you wake up in the morning, you should look for a minister who is sending the word of God, Father. You are supposed to connect. Some of you, you are drinking from a man of God from online. You are eating from a man of God online and you don't care how that message will go. Listen to what happened. Three. Verse three. Mm. And Joanna, the wife of Susa. Yes. Eros, household manager. Yes. And Susanna and many others. All ministered to and provided for him and them out of their prosperity and personal belonging. They brought their substances <laughs> to support the ministry of Jesus. Mm. Praise the Lord. Mm. Some of you from the time you gave your life to Christ, you have never supported anything in the church. You have never supported the growth of the kingdom. So the reason why God wants to give you financial deliverance is because God expects you to support the kingdom of God. It is not for you to go and buy and upgrade your car. It is okay, upgrade your car. Do whatever, but make sure as you are upgrading your car, there is the 10% of God, there is 10% for your own, you pay yourself, and there is also 10% to support the work of God. God is giving you so that you become a blessing. Praise the Lord. Romans 10, 14, 15. As I close, Romans 10, 14 to 15. How will they go until they are sent? Praise the Lord. Your financial deliverance is to make somebody receive what you are receiving right now. At the comfort of your coach, there is somebody in Malsabit who needs an audio. A kotuna kabambe. An attacker. Pastor Millicent. A comforting message. Yate kukua kwa YouTube. Ikue audio. Askize kwa kabambe. How will they go? Eh? Romans 10, 14 and 15. Says what? 
But how are people to call upon in whom they have not believed? Yes. In whom they have no faith or whom they have no reliance. Yes. And how are they to believe in him as they are to trust in and rely upon him? Yes. Of whom they have never heard. Mm. And how are they to be here without a preacher? Yes. 15. And how can men be expected to preach unless they are sent? How can men expected to preach until they are sent? As it is written. As it is written. How beautiful are the how feet, of, beautiful those are the feet of those who bring the good message? How welcome is the coming of those who preach the good news of his good things? Do you know when I take the message of good tidings, you are the one who carries the beautiful feet? Your finances become the beautiful feet now. The reason why we need financial deliverance wapendo wachen wambie, it is because we need to go to Afghanistan. It is because we need to go to India. It is because we have to penetrate to the generations. Praise the Lord. And lastly, because poverty is a demonic curse that we should break at all powers. Poverty is a curse. You need to work on it. Remember the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy 28, 15 all the way to 68, cast is the man, cast is the man. And remember the Bible says in the book of Galatians 3, 13, that Christ Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. Remember, the curse of the law is what is written in the book of Deuteronomy. Now Jesus brought redemption and redeemed us from the curse of the law. Praise the Lord. I want to believe that you have known the reason as to why you should be de delivered. Your finances should be delivered from the hands of the enemy. And I want to pray with you tonight. By the grace of Jehovah, you are going to be redeemed from the power of death. Sir. You are going to be redeemed. Your money is going to be redeemed. Poverty will no longer speak in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will no longer be a poor man. You will become a rich man. You will not carry opinions. You will carry decisions in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy with my eyes open by the grace of Jehovah. He who settles men, may he settle you divinely. May he settle your finances divinely in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And from today I rebuke the spirit of death. Sir. It is a spirit. Yes. If you acknowledge that the spirit of death is a spirit, mm. you will be in a position to handle it in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody is asking me, woman of God, how do I get out of debt. That is what we are going to be handling next Friday. By the masses of God, please tune in. Tune in. Get to know, how do I get out of these debts? Debts have brought shame. Debts have broken marriages. I know of a couple. They broke because of the debts. Debts have made people leave ministries. Debts have made people even do funny things, sacrifice their own family, only for them to be rich. Praise the Lord. Mm. Poverty is a demon. And if you don't realize it, it is something that will sit on you. It is something that will destroy your generation. Until one day you look back and say, I thought I was heading somewhere. Only for me to see, I'm heading to Shiroz. The place of death. Do you know most of the sicknesses that people are having right now? The heart attacks, the depression, the blood sugar. All these things, all these conditions, most of them are backed by death. You look at what you owe the banks, the banks you feel like I cannot continue. Suicidal thoughts are coming because there are so many deaths that need to be handled. I pray for you that by the masses of Jehovah, you have realized why you need financial deliverance. Don't settle for less. Mediocre is not our portion. Let us desire, strive to become successful. If other men are doing it, what about us? Why is it me and you are struggling? Could it be there are some sacrifices we have refused? to work with next Friday tune in for a dosage of a better uplift I assure you we are gonna get better and by the masses of God may he bless the work of our hands the small way let me tell you one thing I'll be talking about God's children should be business people mm. praise the Lord God's children will be business people do you know God can never bless you directly if you are employed I normally tell people that Sara Lee is a bribe against your destiny. Mm. Sara Lee is a bribe to stop your destiny. I'm not telling you not to be employed, but make sure there is the work of your hand that God is blessing. I remain your loved one, Pastor Millicent Israel. This is JCA coming to you along with Yakiwe. We are pleased to be the pastors 
on your online tonight. Again, I want to welcome you tomorrow. We are having wings. It is getting better. The testimony of Pastor Joyce is going on. Do you know some of the things that really made this man to do what he did? They were so much in debt. And I believe that is what made him to do what he's going to do tomorrow. Please stay tuned and hear what debt can do. They can shatter a dream. They can shatter a destiny. Tomorrow, wings starting from 9 to 10. By the masses of God, I'll be your host. Stay tuned. God bless you. Shalom.